Research shows that about 80% of our employees actually hate their jobs. They only look forward to Friday instead of Monday. They think they're paid by the hour when in reality we're paid for the value we bring to that hour. And the only way we can increase our personal and professional value is to become inspired by what we do because we've identified why we do it. You see, inspired people don't have to be motivated. And knowing that qualifies me to work with professional athletes at the highest level. I'm inviting you into a typical National Football League team meeting. I've had the privilege of working with so many of the teams in the NFL, and I'm paid big bucks to say something in this team meeting that will inspire these athletes to leave the meeting and take themselves to the next and highest level. Think about how I worded that. You can't motivate anyone. No one can coach results. We can only coach behavior. You can't say go out and win. You can't say to your sales force, go out and, and, and steal more market share. As parents, we can't say to our children, go be a good boy, go be a good girl. The only thing we can do is coach behavior and behavior is inspired and changed and accelerated and elevated through expectations. Keep that in mind as I invite you in to an NFL team meeting. Uh, 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 53 elite athletes who collectively represent over $105 million in annual salary. Think about it, that's pretty sick. So what would you say to them? Well, the question is what motivates them? The good news, the same thing that motivates them is the same thing that motivates you and me. Can you motivate them with money? Some of you say yes, some of, we, some of you say no. Um, I don't know if we can get a definitive answer on that, but what really perplexes me is that we think in the corporate arena that we have to give someone a bonus to increase productivity and performance. And isn't that sad? You know my love for the military, and in the military, we actually give medals for those who are willing to sacrifice themselves so that others may live. And in the corporate arena, we give bonuses to those who are willing to sacrifice others so that they may survive. Whoa, we've got a bass backwards. In this NFL team meeting, 53 elite athletes who are gajillionaires. And how do I motivate them? It's not with money. Is it with benefits and bonuses? No. Is it with rewards and awards? No. The only thing that motivates them is what motivates you and me, expectations. So here's the object lesson that's worked in every team and in every corporate environment when I'm brought in to do the actual team building and yes, with all due respect, it's more than just giving somebody some popsicle sticks, some rubber bands, and some paper, and gathering around a round table and building a boat and calling that corporate team building. This is real team building. I invite a coach and, and a captain of the team to stand in front of their teammates, in front of this team meeting room, and hold a broomstick 12 inches off the floor. And ahead of time, I get the name of the most gifted, talented athlete on the whole team who can actually jump 38 inches high. Do you know how high that is? Without even getting any running start or any inertia, they just stand there and go, <laughs> jump, eat a Big Mac, drink a Diet Coke before they land. <laughs> oh, whoa, dude. And this prima donna superstar is always sitting in the back of the room. So I call him out by name. His reaction is always the same. <laughs> Why did you wake me up? Why are you bothering me? Don't you read my newspaper clippings? I read my newspaper clippings. Why are you bothering me? So I cheer him to the front. I get his teammates to clap him forward, and sure enough, he gets out of his seat. It takes him 22 and a half minutes to wander or saunder to the front of the room. And now prima donna superstar standing in front of the assistant coach, the captain of the team, holding a 12-inch high broomstick, and I engage him in conversation. Yo, dude, you think you can jump over that 12-inch high broomstick? His reaction's always the same. <laughs> he looks at me like, why are you so stupid? Why are you wasting my time? So I changed the question. Will you jump over that 12 inch high broomstick? His response is always the same. He pacifies me, skips over the bar, stares me down, so I stare back. And here's where the teaching begins. Why did you only jump 12 inches high when you and your teammates know you can jump 38 inches high. And his answer is always the same, because that's all you asked me to do. 
How high is your bar? How high should it be? Only you know if you're pushing yourself to your ultimate capacity and potential as a human being. And isn't it the reality of the corporate arena, the sports arena, the education arena, the life arena, that if you're not pushing yourself and training as hard as you possibly can and pushing yourself to your ultimate capacity and potential as a human being, someone else, somewhere else is. And when you meet him, he will win. When you meet her, she will win. Whoa. Everyone with whom you live, work, recreate, and perhaps worship knows how high your bar is because they see it every day. But only you know how high it should be. Only you know if you're reaching your ultimate capacity and potential as a human being. 